Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 20th of November 2020. This week the AD line has gone on to make new all-time highs, that's not just the New York Stock Exchange All, Indus, All Issues AD line, it's also Lowry's Operating Companies Only AD line have both made new all-time highs this week. That is a very bullish signal and supports the main Elliott Wave count at the daily chart level. It doesn't preclude a short-term pullback, that is entirely possible, but if we do see a pullback continue next week, I would expect on balance of probability it to be more likely a pullback of a short-term nature within an ongoing upward trend to new all-time highs. Elliott Wave analysis first, classic analysis last, as per usual. This wave count is very bullish. It expects the S&P to continue on up to new all-time highs for another one, two, possibly a few years. A cycle degree wave should last from one to seven years and I would expect cycle wave 5 may be lasting about 3, 4 or 5 years in total. Cycle wave 5 must subdivide as a 5 wave structure and so far it looks most likely to be subdividing as an impulse with primary waves 1 and 2 most likely to be complete and primary 3 beginning here. If cycle 5 is an impulse then primary 3 within it may only subdivide as an impulse. So far intermediate 1 and 2 may be complete and intermediate 3 may have begun and then 4 and 5 have to continue. Within intermediate 3 no second wave correction may move beyond the start of its first wave. Let's take a look at the daily chart level where this high here for primary wave 1 is this point back here. We've had a new high back here from the S&P and we've had a series of higher lows and so although this is mostly sideways movement the new high and the higher lows do support the view of an upward trend and this has support from classic technical analysis. It does not however preclude the possibility of minor wave 2 continuing a little bit lower if it does continue a bit lower next week I would not expect it to be by much and I would not expect downward movement to last very long. Technically, minor 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below the invalidation point, but if it does continue, I would expect it to not move much lower at all. What's most likely is minor 2 was over here, and minor 3 with an intermediate 3 within primary 3 may have begun back here. When third waves extend, and it's very or it's most commonly the extended wave for the S&P, they do so in price as well as time. I'm going to flick over to Motive Wave and I'm going to show you an example from the bull market. And this is back in October 2011. So this is the bull market back here that began in March 2009. This is the low here, 666.79. So we've got a first wave and a second wave and now we're looking first wave at cycle degree, second wave at cycle degree, now we're looking at the start of a cycle degree third wave. We have a second wave here at primary degree, a second wave here at intermediate degree, another second wave here at minor degree. We do have a series of higher highs and higher lows, but if you looked back at this piece of movement here, and you're looking back at this deep pullback and you didn't know what came afterward, you would be forgiven for being possibly a little bit more bearish than this looks here. And even when we get into this, we're looking at resistance back up here. I'm going to pop this price label on here so we can see when this was breached. Here's the high of minor wave 1. Up to here, so we're hitting resistance and hitting resistance again, breaking through, coming down for a back test of support. This series of upward days here was fairly strong, but prior to this, there's a bit of hesitancy around breaking through above this prior high back here at 1474. If you didn't know what came afterward and you were only looking at that, you may be forgiven if you only had this information here, you may be forgiven for being concerned about the hesitancy of price there. We could be in a similar situation here. We have had another high here, 
and now we've got some hesitancy prior to breaking back through. This is quite normal behaviour. We, what we don't have is strong downward movement. And that's another thing about the S&P. When it begins its strong downward trends, it usually begins them with reasonable strength. By reasonable strength, I mean we should have seen, if we've got a sustainable high in place here, we should have seen 90% downward days or two back-to-back 80% downward days. But we're not seeing a lot of downward strength in here quite the opposite, we've got some very strong bullish signals from classic technical analysis. And so for those reasons, this does remain my main wave count. I am still expecting a third wave up at three degrees, minor, intermediate and primary should be beginning imminently. Again, that does not preclude minor wave two continuing a little bit lower, and if it does, I would not expect it to be by much or for long. At the hourly chart level, I have two wave counts for you. Here's the first one, which sees, which sees minor wave two over here, the same way as it's labelled at the daily chart level, and minor three beginning here, with another series of one, two, and three overlapping first and second waves. To explain the confidence point, we'll be looking at the alternate hourly wave count. If we see a new high above this price point by any amount at any time frame, I would have more confidence in this chart at the hourly chart level and more confidence in the idea of new all-time highs from the S&P following very soon after. The target for primary three remains the same for it to reach equality in length with primary one. If that target is wrong, it may not be high enough. As we approach the target, I will look to see if the structure of primary three could be complete. If it isn't, or if price just keeps rising through that target, I'll then calculate a new higher target for you. Alternatively, it's possible that minor two was not over here and could be continuing further sideways as a combination. Still seeing this downward movement as a zigzag, but instead of minor two over there, it could have just been the first zigzag in the double combination. The double may be joined by a three in the opposite direction labelled X at minute degree, and the second structure in the double may be an incomplete expanded flat labelled A, B, C, with minuet C to subdivide as an impulse, one, two, three, four, five. Within the third wave, micro 4 may not move into micro 1 price territory. A new high above this amount by uh, this sorry, a new high above this price point by any amount at any time frame invalidates this labeling here and so adds a little confidence to that first hourly chart. Alternatively, this wave counts different at the monthly chart level in the way it views the bull market which is off to the left of the chart beginning in March 2009. To see the material difference between my two wave counts it's important to view the monthly charts and I link back to those at the beginning of every analysis. It's possible that the bull market was over here and I'm labelling it cycle degree first wave and then a second wave could have begun here unfolding as an expanded flat, A, B, C, where B moves beyond the start of A, and in this instance is a 1.21 length of A. That's within the common range of a B wave within a flat of up to 1.38, and in a flat correction, expanded flats are reasonably common structures, although they most commonly occur in a B wave position, and not so often in a second wave position. This is possible though, but this is an alternate with a low probability because it does not have support from classic technical analysis. This B wave would be exhibiting too much strength to be considered a normal looking B wave. With the AD line making new all time highs again this week, it's most likely that price will follow and that doesn't support this wave count. This wave count expects a bear market to have just begun a couple of weeks ago to be primary wave C, which would be expected to move below the end of A to avoid a truncation and a very rare running flat. The target is calculated at two wave degrees. Primary C will reach 1.618 times the length of primary A at 1701. Cycle 2 will reach 0.618 the length of cycle 1 at 1708. So a seven point target zone for a bear market for you to unfold over weeks if not months. At the daily chart level, if primary B is over here, primary C should have begun 
minor 1 and 2 could be complete, minor 3 could be continuing lower. If this wave count is correct, it's not convincing this downward movement here for the start of a bear market. It's possible, as in the realm of many things are possible, it just doesn't have a good probability. But I like to consider all possibilities and if my wave, my first wave count, my main wave count is invalidated, then I need us to have a pathway for a possible next movement for price. Last week we had upwards movement, volume pushed price higher. This week an inside week closes red, within the week volume has not pushed price lower. This looks like a small pause within an ongoing upward trend. Neither of these candlesticks are bearish reversal patterns. On balance volume remains range bound. The range is weak. Resistance is only just able to be drawn. Support is only just able to be drawn. RSI is in neutral territory. There's room for price to rise or fall. ADX indicating an upward trend at the weekly chart level and MACD full ball bullish both support the main Elliott wave count. ATR declining as price moves higher is absolutely normal behaviour for this particular market. Here's the last all time high from the S&P. Back over here, we haven't seen another new all time high from price this week but we haven't also seen strong downward movement this week. A little bit of push from volume here pushing price lower in this session, however the last session, an inside day, the balance of volume was down but it wasn't particularly strong, so volume is no longer pushing price lower. This looks like, most likely, a small pause within an ongoing upward trend rather than the start of a new strong downward trend. ADX is declining. At this time frame there's no clear trend but if it turns up again it would give a very strong bullish signal. On balance volume is at support. This may assist to halt a fallen price. RSI is back in neutral territory. There is again room for price to rise. There's still room for price to fall as well though. MACD fully bullish and stochastics returning to neutral. When this market trends, when it has a bullish trend, stochastics can remain extreme for a long period of time. And so stochastics reaching overbought on its own does not mean upward movement has to end. This week the AD line has made new all time highs. This is the NYSE All Issues AD line. Lowry's Operating Companies Only AD line also this week has made new all time highs. I read the AD line as a measure of market breadth as a leading indicator. Where it leads, price most commonly will follow. At the daily chart level for Friday, price moved lower. An inside day, the AD line moved a little bit lower. Neither have made new short-term swing lows. And there's still this cluster of bullish signals at the daily chart level from price and the AD line, supporting the main Elliott wave count. Between price and inverted VIX there is over three years of bearish divergence. It's not proving to be particularly helpful in timing the end of a bull market. It could continue to develop even further for months or years yet. So looking at shorter term divergences may be more useful for price and inverted VIX at this time. This week price has completed a small range inside week. Inverted VIX has very slightly declined. There's no new divergence. There is a little bit of bullish, sorry, bearish divergence here from last week that does still remain intact. Between price, oh sorry, VIX and VVIX, VIX has had a little increase. VVIX is essentially flat. This is not enough for me to read divergence into that. At the daily chart level, price moved lower. With an inside day for Friday, inverted VIX moved lower, neither have made new short term lows. There is still a small cluster of bullish divergence for the short term between price and inverted VIX to support the main Elliott wave count. For Friday, VVIX and VIX have moved higher. There is no new short term divergence. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope that all of our members are having an awesome weekend.